Hey guys, today we're going to be comparing the buffs that we get from a duty general and the buffs that we would get from a defense general. Now, these two might seem a little bit weird to compare, but for this video we're thinking in terms of cost effectiveness. And for this video what we're going to be uh, using to analyze that is what I call the B2B ratio. Blood of Ares to buff ratio. So this is essentially the number of blood of Ares that is required to get the buffs, and then we divide that. So for Richard the Lionheart in this situation, to get 1% buff is going to require 7.75 blood of Ares. And so this is how we're going to calculate how important, uh, how uh, cost effective these generals are going to be for their buffs. Uh, since we're looking in terms of a defensive strategy, we don't distinguish in this in the numbers between attack, defense, and HP, or troop types, because for most defenses generally, uh, having a well-rounded defense is going to be pretty important. So we're just looking at all the numbers equally. There are some situations, of course, if you're a mounted heavy keep, you're going to value duty generals that buff your mounted troops more. But for this video, we're just looking at flat across the board, more of an open defense. Now, first let's look at the defensive general we're analyzing for this video. Richard the Lionheart. Why are we looking at Richard? Well, Richard has the highest overall buff percentage of any of the free generals that you can get. Richard is also the free general that I would recommend. He's very good once you get him uh, up to some four or five red stars. And you also don't even have to max out his last specialty because that's just hospital capacity. So that's something that's pretty nice about him as well. We can see with Richard that we're looking at a 7.75, a 12.5, 8.9, 8.9, 7.8. And that averages out to 8.8 .8 for the B2B ratio with a total of 520% buffs. So this is kind of the baseline that we're trying to achieve when comparing these duty generals too. Now I'm just gonna stay straight off the bat None of them are even close. Richard's going to give you more buffs for Blood of Ares. Now, these boxes are highlighted in green because these are upgrades that I would 100% recommend getting. The boxes that are highlighted in yellow, those are ones that I'm like, mm, it might make sense. And then these ones, these are the ones that have notes that something important to point out for your defense. Now. Let's look at the total buffs that each general is going to give us. Richard's going to buff 520% for the ascension skills only. That doesn't count base skill or any of the other factors that go into that. Mangashav 160, Skadberg 180, John the First 190, Guanru 230, Abdel Ram 180, Askia 235, Banshao 280. Mundiak 250, Oleg 180, and Toyotomi Hideyoshi 240. Now, let's look at some of these uh, individually. So as we can see, the only one that comes even close, or the highest overall, is Banshao with 280. But that doesn't even scratch the surface of Richard's 520%. So to answer the question of the video, no, it's not worth upgrading your duty generals instead of your defense general. Upgrade your defense general first, and then your duty generals. But let's say we already have your Richard the Lionheart at five stars or whoever. Which duty generals are we going to want to upgrade next? So let's take a look at that. Make a shot of the first two uh, upgrades for the first star and the second star are very good. They have a blood of blood to buff ratio of 10.33 and 12.5. We can see that these ratios actually come pretty close to Richard the Lionheart and this 10.33 actually beats out the second skill on Richard and this is the same as that one. So the first two upgrades on Menkeshav I would highly recommend. I think they're pretty much just as good as upgrading any ground, any uh, defensive general. The next two upgrades don't give him any extra buffs the fourth one gives a negative 6% to enemy attack, but that's not really huge. And I wouldn't really up 
recommend upgrading him fully at all, but these first two stars I would 100% recommend upgrading. And I might even recommend upgrading them before you upgrade your defensive general because you can use him. You're, he's going to stay there all the time, and Ebony is always releasing new defensive generals. So maybe if you want to wait for one that's uh, got to come out and you're going to get them instead, in the meantime, you could upgrade Mekashov and you'll get a pretty good return on your investment. Next we have Scott Burt. Uh, the, first race, the first upgrade has a 10.33 ratio, upgrading your ranged and your siege, 15 and 15, and we're going to see this number for a lot of the ones. I would, uh, I would recommend it, not as much as I would recommend Mekashaw's first two upgrades, but the buff is nice, especially if you're looking to buff specific troops. That first upgrade is uh, not bad. Gwine Rule has the same one for ranged and siege. Range and Siege Banchow upgrades as well with the same ratio. And then Toyota Yossi has uh, the same ratio as well, but he buffs across the board. So I would recommend that one. That's a, that's a pretty decent solid one. The rest of these I wouldn't really recommend. Uh, John the First, his is not bad. Not great. It's it's kind of mad. I, w I would... Uh, if you wanted to upgrade it, I can see the reasoning behind it. It might make some, some sense. These other ones, the buffs you get for them are just pretty small. But they are buffing the ground and the mounted troops. So if uh, if you're lucky, I said, you're looking for more of a mounted heavy keep or a ground heavy keep, it could make sense to upgrade these ones. But in terms of cost effectiveness and overall buffs, it doesn't really make sense. But that could be a viable option. I wouldn't really recommend upgrading any of these generals to two, three, four, or five stars, except for Mankashov. The two star I would actually recommend for him. The rest of these guys, not really anything special. Uh, Banchow could be worth upgrading to two stars simply because you get this extra 20% attack. And the 25 blood ratio, although it's not super cost effective, it's not it's not terrible either when you compare it to the others. It's pretty much par for the course, considering. And the 20% extra t archer tower attack will help you with the defense, so that could be an upgrade that might be worth it. Okay, now those are the upgrades that I would recommend for like just the first starters. Which ones make sense to upgrade all the way to five stars? In terms of cost effectiveness, Mekashov doesn't make sense to upgrade fully to five stars. Get the first two upgrades and be done with him. Skodberg, it makes no sense to upgrade him to five stars. The cost effectiveness just isn't there. Same case with John the First. It doesn't really make sense to upgrade to five stars unless you want this extra. 10% for each of these categories because this is effective in the attacking as well so it's not just a defensive buff if you want to get these buffs uh, the same with Guan Rule, Abdal and uh, Oleg if you want to go for the buffs cost effectiveness it doesn't make sense but it is it is an option and you might want to do it because of that The one exception to this is Guan Rule. Now, I say Guan Rule is an exception because we can see his ratio is a 19.9, which is pretty solid when you compare it to all the others. So his cost effectiveness is not terrible when considering the other duty generals. And on top of that, you get this little one, this uh, little attack buff. So I think of all the, the attacking generals that give you attacking buff, that Guan Rule would be the best, makes the most sense. And siege buffs are reasonably important. Next we have Askia. I put that in yellow because in terms of cost effectiveness, it's not terrible. It's slightly cheaper than the Guan Rules buffs, but it's not it's not great. I probably wouldn't recommend it. Banchow. I would recommend Banchow if you have the resources to do it. 
and you don't you don't have any better place to put them. Of all the duty generals, he makes the most sense to fully max out the stars for the buff to uh, cost effective ratio. And you know if you already got two stars to get to the twenty percent, maybe you haven't for two stars in a while, and later down the road you want to just go all the way and finish it. It's not a bad uh, cost effectiveness. I wouldn't recommend, however, getting him to three stars and leaving him there. If you get him to three stars, you might as well go all the way to make the cost effectiveness worth it. Because with this 29 blood of Ares to 1% buff ratio, that's pretty outrageous. But the last two in his skill uh, are not terrible. They're pretty decent. Next we have Illusion Mundiak. Uh, overall, Blood to Ares uh, ratio, not horrible, but not great. If you're looking for someone to 5-star, that is that is an option. Another one is uh, Toyota Yoshi. With a 19.1 cost-effective ratio, it's not terrible, it's, it's okay. But the reason I would say that you might want to consider it is I think you should upgrade him enough so that you can max out your rally spot march capacity for the duty buffs. So if you need to get some extra stars to do that, it can make sense in that case because the extra march size is going to help you in more situations than otherwise normally would. So this is not a terrible one to upgrade, but if you can get the max rally without upgrading all the way, I probably wouldn't recommend it. Okay, that's my quick analysis on the duty generals and whether they're up worth upgrading or even whether they're worth upgrading over a defense general. If you found the video useful, maybe leave me a like, maybe subscribe, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.